If you've just been in an accident, uh, oftentimes what happens is that people uh, get knocked around so badly in their vehicles that they're either not sure or they don't remember what happened in the wreck. So it's a good idea not to provide uh, a statement that causes you to guess at what happened, number one. Say what you know. If there's a police officer, provide the best possible statement you can, but give it to the police. But what's going to happen after that is this. You're going to be contacted by the other driver's insurance company. And those insurance companies have three reasons to contact you. First, to get you nailed down in terms of what you think happened in the wreck, the purpose of which is to either deny your claim or to reduce the amount of your claim. Okay? The second thing they want to ask you is they want to ask you, are you hurt? And they will be contacting you within a day or two, even a week, of the accident when maybe you don't know what all of your injuries are. If you talk to them at that point and you say, well, gee, I had a little neck pain, but it seems to be getting better, when in fact you've got a, a, a growing injury inside you and you don't know it, but you tell them, well, I think I'm okay, they've just nailed you down to, I've got a little bit of a neck pain and your case is uh, uh, really compromised at that point. So you need to be careful about that. Uh, the other thing they want to contact you about is uh, why it is that you either think the other guy was at fault or why you were at fault. And what they will do is they will try and get facts out of you to make it your fault. Because if the accident, if they can say that the accident's your fault, they don't have to pay your claim. And remember, insurance companies for the other driver are in the business of making money, and they don't make money when they pay out on your claim. So, All right. When you're in a wreck, you have a couple of options, some which are obligatory and some which are not. Number one, you have to contact the Department of Motor Vehicles to let them know you've been in a wreck, and there are certain forms that you have to fill out and send into the state to let them know that this has actually happened and it becomes part of your official record. It doesn't mean it's a traffic ticket, it just is something you're required to do. And it's actually a violation of law not to do it. So go ahead and do that and we can help you with that uh, if you need. The second thing uh, you need to do is you need to contact your insurance company because your insurance company uh, uh, also requires, under the terms of your contract, that you contact them after a wreck. And in this instance, you tell them what happened and you provide them with information that will allow them to pay, number one, your medical bills, which you're probably going to incur if you've been hurt, and lost income that you're going to lose if you've lost time at work because of what happened to you in the wreck. So you definitely contact your insurance company and you cooperate with them because if you don't cooperate with them, they don't have to cooperate with you. And what that means is they don't pay your medical bills, they don't pay lost income. So definitely call your insurance company, cooperate with them, and do what you can to help them. Now there, there's one thing you need to remember too. Sometimes your company, uh, in looking at your medical bills, will uh, make a determination that they want their own doctor to take a look at you. And when that happens, sometimes they're thinking maybe they want to cut off your benefits. You need to be careful about that. And that's why the other person you need to talk to in all of this is a lawyer. You should call a lawyer very soon after the wreck to understand and be told what your rights are, both with the bad driver's insurance company and with your own, if your own decides that they want to stop paying on your claim. So it's real important to get a lawyer in there to talk to you, to advise you what your rights are so that you understand them and so that you can make the right decisions when the questions come to you 
from your own company or when the other company comes calling, you can direct them to us. Okay? Uh, you may have read in the uh, papers or seen on TV in the last uh, five to ten years uh, an explosion of sex abuse cases either by uh, priests or employers um, or teachers, people who stand in a position of trust to another person. Um, oftentimes it involves adult on child sex abuse. Sometimes it's uh, a supervisor at work who is taking advantage of an employee with a lower rank. Uh, our law firm works those cases. Uh, I have a subspecialty in that field. I have successfully obtained money for every client I've ever represented in such a case. I've uh, uh, gone against the Catholic Church in America and won one of the largest uh, settlements uh, that has come around in the nation. I have successfully sued uh, psychotherapists when they've had sex with patients, which is not okay for them to do, obviously. Uh, I've gone against teachers. I've gone against organizations, uh, churches, and so on, where uh, you know there have been, say, deacons in a church taking care of small children who have molested them while, say, their parents were at a social function, you know, just yards away. Uh, these are extremely sensitive cases that require expertise. Uh, I was trained uh, when I worked as a district attorney in California in prosecuting these sex cases. Uh, I know about interview techniques for children on these sex cases. I've worked with Child Advocacy Center here in Medford uh, on sex abuse cases, and I currently have cases uh, uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest uh, and California. <clears throat> if you think you've been abused sexually, or if you think uh, a loved one of yours, particularly a child of yours, has been abused, what do you do? Well, because there are statutes of limitation that sort of limit the time during which you can actually bring a lawsuit against an offender, either whether it be a, a, a minister or an employer or whoever the, the uh, object uh, person is, you should go talk to a lawyer immediately to find out what are my rights here? Do I still have rights? Is it too late? Well, I can tell you that many states have extended statutes of limitations by decades. A uh, case I had against the Catholic Church, the statute of limitations had been extended to the point where I had a case that was over 50 years old, and we still, still won on that case. So it's important. Go talk to a lawyer right now. Do not wait, and be ready to talk about what happened. Now, if it involves a child, a young child in particular with whom uh, there has been a recent event or series of events. My suggestion is that parents come in and do not bring the child in for an interview. There are police officers, there are therapists who are specifically trained to obtain statements in cases like this that will preserve evidence both for a criminal action and a subsequent civil action for money damages. And so, uh, from that perspective, when you come in, be prepared to talk to me, but uh, it's probably best to not even bring the child in until maybe the third or fourth interview.